It was Ferrari who ended the opening day of running at Spa fastest, in a day with plenty of problems for the hypercars and no less than four red flags. Antonio Giovinazzi topped the times with a 201.871, almost a second faster than last year's pole time aboard the number 51 Ferrari, going purple in all three sectors. The sister 50 Ferrari ended the day third in the times, thanks to Miguel Molina, but had problems at the start of free practice too, which saw the car fail to set a timed lap in the opening half of the session. Sebastian Buemi went quickest in free practice one to end the day second overall for Toyota, with the sister car seven fifth in the times. It wasn't a perfect day for Toyota, who didn't do their usual trick of banking laps in free practice, as both cars had a long stay in the garage at the start of free practice one. It's only practice, but it looks like Toyota might finally have the challenge they've been hoping for. Cadillac Racing went fourth quickest thanks to Alex Lynn, but the sister number three car ended today on a flatbed after an apparent fire with Renga van der Zander at the wheel near the start of free practice too. The yellow Imsa car ended the day down in 21st overall because of this, behind all but two of the LMP2s. Porsche Penske Motorsport had an incredibly promising free practice one, with Lawrence Vantor in particular putting together a very solid race run at the start of the session, and also posting a time quick enough for them to end the day 6th fastest, with the sister car in ninth. This was followed up by an absolute disaster in the afternoon for Porsche, with both cars stopping on the circuit before they completed a competitive lap time. The number 5 stopped with drivetrain issues, before the 6 ground to a halt with an unspecified technical woe. Peugeot Total Energies were another with some issues, as the 93 spent a long time in the garage during free practice too, but Jean-Eric Verne's efforts still put them 7th quickest, with the other car 10th overall. Glickenhaus Racing had a positive free practice too, as Olivier Plough went 6th quickest to end the day 8th overall. The even better news is that Glickenhaus had the smoothest running of everyone in hypercar today, and if the race is anywhere near as attritional as free practice too, they could well be in with a sniff of a very strong result. Hertz team Jota weren't particularly on the pace today, ending up behind the quickest LMP2s, but they banked the laps on the first time their brand new Porsche 963 has run on a racetrack, and can be happy with the day's work. Antonio Felix da Costa, however, missed the driver's briefing, picked up a fine, and was also unable to run any laps today. De Costa wasn't the only hypercar driver visiting the steward's office, as Van Wall's Esteban Guerri was given a 10 minute stop and hold after contact with the D station Aston Martin brought out the red flags at the end of free practice one. The Van Wall ended up as the slowest hypercar, 23rd overall, after having to have a long stay in the pitch during free practice two. Robin Freintz ended the day quickest in LMP2 for home team WRT going almost half a second quicker than Philippe Albuquerque in the championship-leading United Autosports car. LMP2 was just as close as ever, with only Alpine outside of 1.1 seconds of France's time. Davide Regon was fastest in LMGTM aboard the 54 of Corsa Ferrari, which brought out the final red flag of the day after a nasty accident for Thomas Fleur with the sister car of Diego Alessi. Both left under their own steam, but still, I really hope they're all right and we can see both cars back in action tomorrow. AF Corsa's third car, the Richard Milbacked 83, brought out the first red flag of the day with a minor off at Lacombe. Daniel Serra ended up second quickest for Kessel Racing, whilst Corvette found themselves in the strange position of second from last in the times. Tomorrow, it's qualifying day, and it looks like it's going to be a day of wet running. Even in the dry, tyres were taking three laps to get up to temperature, so it could be very challenging to get up to pace in the 15 minute qualifying sessions, which even for the hypercars is only seven timed laps at best. I for one don't fancy the plunge into a rouge on freezing tyres, and if a red flag comes out in qualifying right in the middle, it could be a case of whoever is bravest and can get them switched on the quickest takes pole. Who do you think will take pole tomorrow? Can Ferrari beat Toyota? Please let me know in the comments below, and whilst you're down there, why not press that like button? 
it really helps me out. 